What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Well, hello, everybody. It's Jay Campbell, and welcome to the Jay Campbell Podcast. I am very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by Maureen St. Germain. Maureen, it is very nice to meet you. How are you doing today? (laughs) I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be with you. It's amazing to have you. So for a lot of you guys who are going to be watching this today when this runs, uh, you already know Maureen, very, very accomplished author, uh, but I'll maybe just give you a, a little bit of her bio. 25 years of experience in the area of mystical and sacred traditions. She's known as a practical mystic and is a prolific teacher and facilitator of spiritual knowledge for contemporary life. She's a very clear channel from source, continuously researching, developing, and introducing new methods that will help you connect with your own wisdom channel. She's obviously a lifelong interest in the Akashic Records. That's how her and I have actually been led towards each other today. Uh, and she's, it's resulted in her being granted access to a dimension that has been off limits to most of humanity for millions of years. Um, she's widely known for her Amazon bestseller, Beyond the Flower of Life, which I have read, so has my wife, Monica. Um, she's been sharing knowledge that she has gained from her years of teaching meditation and research on ancient truths. And label of modern day mystic and famous Wisconsin mystics, Maureen is taught in 24 countries throughout Europe, Canada, USA, Egypt, China, and Japan. Again, amazing. Her latest two books, uh, one of which I just finished actually a couple weeks ago. Um, Well, I should say I've read it a second time. Waking Up in 5D. And then her newest book is Opening the Akashic Records, which is how her and I were introduced to each other here today um, through one of the folks, amazing people, Tina Christel, who works for you or with you. And uh, she was grateful uh, enough to be able to set this up today. So with all that said, again, it's an honor to have you. As I normally go on these podcasts, before we get into the meat, meats and, and potatoes, and obviously we're in an incredibly amazing time right now on this planet, um, you know, talk a little bit about what is going on in your opinion right now. Um, I think there's more going on than what we realize. Um, you know, there's a lot of drama around the eroding of people's rights and i'm not so interested in the politics as i am interested in um, allowing a space for people to go inside and get in their heart and and reconnect one of the things that i believe the purpose of this energy is to um, create a space for people to be more conscious of what they care about, who they care about, and how they're going to express. And then they have more time to be um, in, inward, to move inward. And all of that is part of the mission of the virus itself, or whatever it is that we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean. You know, it, it's always interesting, but things like this do take on their own form of consciousness. And everything wants to evolve. So as we look at the energy of the virus, we can say <clears throat> it can't be completely eliminated. You can certainly antidote its effects so you're not sick at home. Mm-hmm. But the overall effects for many people is um, impacting how they're living and the choices they're making. Um, and the healthier you are, the less likely you are to get seriously sick from all of this. Correct. So that's one thing. Another thing that I think is really important is that I hope that people are learning uh, that their outrage is not serving them anymore. And it's one thing to insist this is how it needs to be. It's another thing to uh, cry foul or to use their voice to be hurtful or spiteful or um critical in a mean way. I mean, you know, we can say, I don't like this, or I think, you know, our rights are being eroded, or who, who gave the governor the right to close down the park, stuff like that. Right. But it doesn't make him a bad person. It just means he's trying to solve the problem that he sees, and based upon the advice he's getting. Um, 
but we have a constitution and people will not forget. And that's what I think is really happening. That people will begin to recognize that we do have rights and they will never forget. Um, right. So I think there's a lot of people who have uh, expected um, certain things from the world around them that they're going to suddenly step up and say, I can, I can take accountability for that. I can take my own way for that. So do you see um, what is happening? Because I, I could also make an argument or you know, gla the other side of the fence that there's a lot of benefit that's coming from this. As industry has shut down, the earth is almost metamorphosizing in a lot of ways, right? Like natural beauty has picked up. You can see clearer. There's not as much smog and industrial pollution. In fact, I haven't even seen any planes spraying chemtrails in Los Angeles in a long time. Um, you know, talk, talk about that. I mean, is your, in your opinion, is this, because so many people, you know, as you say, look at it from a glass half full, you know, or, or just even glass half empty and that it, it, there's so many negative consequences. They're constrained. They, they've lost their jobs. They've lost their income. But is there more, you know, of a silver lining to this? There's a huge silver lining to it. Absolutely. That's what I meant when I said that the virus itself has its own consciousness right. and you can't exactly eliminate it because it has a job to do. And the job it has to do is to make us more aware, to make us more uh, introspective, more accountable, more responsible, and to change how we operate. Absolutely. I'm totally on board with that. Do you think, so what do you think is the end game of the virus? Is it something that's just going to, as you said, you know, change, obviously it's going to change the planet. We already know that, but is it just something you think that'll just go away and it, it'll gradually evolve the planet to a better state of being, which kind of goes into my next point. Is that kind of what it's going to end up doing? I think most definitely that's what, hap what will happen. I also think it will disappear as, almost as fast as it came. Right. I think, you know, as the sun, because, you know, let's face it, he, it sunshine, sunshine is the enemy number one. So right. As we see more sunshine, all of us are going to get outside, even if it's just to stand in place, you know, where we are, right. uh, we're going to get the sun and um, we're not, it's going to dip, dissipate. <clears throat> um, so, so what is the purpose and what is the end game? Number one, I do not believe that this was a uh, planned event by Mother Earth. But I believe Mother Earth and those that would have us succeed in our spirituality and our evolution are taking advantage of the opportunity. And certainly I'm taking advantage of the opportunity because I'm offering tons of free classes right. and I'm you know, doing lots of free readings for people. And what I think um, is that the Earth has been ready for us to transform. I also have been saying for quite a few years now that our humanity or our spirituality has not caught up with our technology. So I'm going to sit here and say we had access to a lot of ET technology. I'm not going to say how or why, but just to announce that that's true. Sure. And that that allowed us to leapfrog, which is great. But then our spirituality did not keep pace with that. Because if it had, we wouldn't be doing what we do. And I'll give you a simple example. Years ago, when I asked, you know, about the fact that I could see two Earths, actually three, but two right now, you know, that are kind of splitting apart. Sure. The, um, the new Earth, as, as I see it, the one that we're all on right now, that, that we're evolving with, you can't cut down a tree. Right. Without process. You can't just decide, okay, this tree's in the way. Right. So everything changes in the fact that we approach nature uh, with, a, with a level of respect that we have not done. And a good steward does that, but we haven't been good stewards. Right. And you, well said. And you can make an argument that, you know, those, I love how you say that in the 5D book, those who would hold us back. I love that. I use that with everyone. Um, those who would hold us back, it's kind of what they want, right? Their whole goal is this transhumanism man machine merge get rid of the divine sovereign empowered and free humanity that we represent as sold you know higher self beings it's it's crazy um, but yeah I, I agree I, I i truly agree that's that's kind of the direction it's almost like and i, and I don't know what will happen i mean i agree with you on the whole bifurcation but it almost me it almost kind of is leading to that where it's going to be a certain sector of society will take the chip 
and you know, and then the other folks that will remi- remain divine, sovereign, and free, as I like to call it, will just go the other way. It's, it seems like that's that's kind of the direction we're headed. I want you to talk a little bit about before I get into waking up in five D, which is a profound book. Um, I want you to just you know discuss, and I know you do this in all your books, a little about the importance of creating your own reality and how quantum physics teaches us this that this is science. You know, for people that are still you know, resistant to that. It's a fact. I mean, you can read any quantum physics book and any science, you know, tome nowadays that mentions it. And again, it's like I always say, it's that which is focused upon is given. And that it can, you know, cover all aspects of your life. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. So I'm going to reference a book that I wrote 20 years ago right. and establish clearly that there is a magic formula. And the formula is called the Phoenix sequence. And the Phoenix sequence houses the Fibonacci sequence. And a lot of people know the Fibonacci sequence. It's sure. one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, like that. And what we're doing is we're taking an adjacent pair and adding it together to make the next number. Right. And it is also known that when you get to a certain point on this sequence, that you can predict the result of the division between any adjacent pair. Now, um, that outcome is called the phi ratio right. or the golden mean. And you see it in the Great Pyramid. You see it in the relationship between Venus and the sun and the earth. You see it in the relationship between the bones of the body. So this is in phi to this. Um, And even as small as the DNA, which is measured in angstroms, which is one ten billionth of a meter. So think about how tiny that must be. You can still find that ratio, 34 angstroms to 21 angstroms, when you look at a certain helix that shows Uh, the double helix where it shows the short curve and then the long curve. Now, what does all that mean? It means that that phi is source code for creation. And if phi is source code for creation and you can find phi in the stock market, you can find it in the human body, you can find it in the way plants grow, you can find it in every relationship out there. It means that the earth is transforming relationship by relationship. Now, What that also means is that not only have we the ability to get understanding of source code, it means we can apply it to ourselves. And so not only does quantum physics reinforce this this idea that you can manifest the outcome, I'm going to say to you that the Phoenix sequence establishes clearly beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can take any relationship and turn it into the fire ratio. And I'll show you what I mean. You can take any two numbers. So this is for everybody who's listening, write down any number you want, and then write a second number any way you want, any number you want, and then add them together. And the ninth and 10th iteration or the ninth and 10th addition, you take that and divide it and you will always get 1.618, which is the phi ratio. So the Fibonacci sequence that everybody's raving about is actually a subset of the Phoenix sequence, which I named. The Phoenix sequence is well known in day trading and in other places, but they never named it. So I took it upon myself to give it a name. I am the only one who related it to manifestation and creation to show that you will find this relationship between any two numbers as they shift and evolve. And so What that also means is that you can start with wherever you're at and go to not the thing you want to manifest, but the thing after what you want to manifest, because what happens is what you want to manifest is in the middle of that ratio. So you need to get the relationship between something beyond where you want and something where you are at. So the, the classic that lots of people are interested in is finding their beloved. And so finding their beloved is the outcome. Right. So what proves that you found your, uh, your beloved? And that would be the uh, beginning of the, the relationship that you're going to hold in your head. So that means you're going to celebrate and you're going to celebrate some kind of anniversary or special event. Okay. So let's say you're celebrating your anniversary. You don't have to know what anniversary is. You don't have to know whether it was when you moved in together, when you got married, whatever it is, you're celebrating and you see yourself celebrating. Now in the West, the way we celebrate is we have a glass And we usually put something in the glass, you know, something bubbly if we want. And we clink glasses and we say, I'm so happy or some kind of conversation. Now, what I figured out is that when we 
uh, manifests in our head, that's in 5D. That's in the reality, but it's out there ahead of us. And how are we going to get it here where we are? And the answer is to make a 3D conversation because the 3D conversation is what the mind thinks is real. Just like they proved this in Russia with basketball players, you know, 30 years ago, where they allowed them to practice at the foul line shooting hoops. The, the control group, no improvement. The, the group that practiced at the foul line for half an hour improved 30%. How much did the group that pretended to practice and only thought about it for 30 minutes? 25%, almost the same. So, so what that means is if you wanna manifest something and let's, let's go back to that storyline of the beloved. You're here, you're single. Figure out why you're happy about being single remove all the resistance and just focus on, okay, I can always choose the movie I want to go to. I can eat what I want. I can eat where I want, whatever it is. Okay. Get all the good stuff about being single and then have a pretend movie in your head where you're with the beloved and the beloved likes what you do. They like the music you like. They love to go to the museums you like. They like entertaining the way you like to entertain. And you clink glasses and you say, I am so happy. And you hear what they say. And when you, in your mind's eye, hear what they say to you, what happens is the consciousness creates the path and the universe fills it in. Wow. So that's another way to prove that not only are we manifesting the reality we want, but we have control over how we manifest. And so we've got to stop thinking about what we really want and go to a point beyond where we want and anchor it in with that 3D conversation. I mean, you just blew my mind. That's pretty amazing stuff. Really amazing stuff. Um, <laughs> you totally just blew my mind. My, my frame of thought, that's pretty awesome. What book was that that you wrote about that in? It's called Be a Genie. Be a Genie. Okay, I'm familiar with that book. I just never read it. Okay, was that the yeah. first book? Was that the first one you read? That was the first book I wrote. Yeah, pretty heavy duty. Wow, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty amazing stuff. I, I, I want to go on Amazon right now and order that. I'm text my wife. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about Waking Up in 5D, which, by the way, was a profound book for me. Um, you know, I, I, I would say that a lot of people in our community, whatever we want to call it, uh, the new age, the spiritual community, I call it the truth community, the consciousness community, um, everyone's talking about 5D. But I don't know if a lot of people really truly understand it in the way that they should understand it. And I thought you did an amazing job in talking about it's really more of a way of being. It's not a place that we're going, it's just an actual vibration. And, you know, that's my entire uh, mythos. I mean, that's what I talk about to everyone. I mean, my statement is raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. So I want you to talk about your book and what, you know, why, again, it's so important to be in 5D as a state of being or a state of existence. Okay, so um, um, I want to make a quick comment about that because I noticed you had that chart on your background. And, you know, David Hawking, publicly said he wished he had not put numbers to that calibration. I know. know. (laughs) Okay. So let's get into 5D. Um, Okay. So 5D being a place is kind of crazy to understand because people have always thought that it was uh, like getting a driver's license. Once you're there, you're there. And um, I had a very funny experience when I was a young mother and I was telling my mother um, about my son who was causing me the most angst and four sons. And this particular son was always catching, you know, the in trouble stuff. Right. And, um, she said, I was telling her how, how pleased I was that he was, you know, finally expressing this mature thing that he had just done. <laughs> and she said, honey, kids don't grow up in a straight line. Right. I said, what does that mean? I was so naive. I had no idea what that meant. And I said, so what does that mean? And she said, well, when they do something mature, they usually follow it with something stupid. Right. And that just cracked me up. And of course, that's exactly what happened. And by the way, that's us. That's how we are evolving. And that's the sine wave. So if you look at the, um, the guys who are using phi or fib or the you know the phi ratio mm. to chart changes in the stock market they're seeing a sine wave that goes up and down but when it starts to hover above that relationship called phi they know it's time to act either buy or sell depending upon what they're doing so what we want to understand is that all of us are 
are taking every relationship we've got going on and taking it to its optimum. Now, when we throw something into that mix, then we start over. So it's not so easy because we keep throwing stuff into our, our mix. And that's why when we do a manifestation movie, like I just showed you, you would have a very narrow, you wouldn't start adding babies or other stuff, right. a house, whatever. So in fifth dimension, it's a vibrational state that we are holding so much love for ourselves and for humanity that it's unthinkable to throw trash on the ground. It's right. unthinkable right. to um, say something mean. It doesn't even cross our mind. So um, it's as if that, doesn't, that choice doesn't exist. And that's why I say in third dimension and fourth, there's this quality of what I call the not God choice. Because in my vernacular now, I no longer say good and bad. I say, well, it's a God choice or it's a not God choice. Because when we're in 3D, we're allowed to make mistakes. It's right. okay to make mistakes. We have chosen to make it, quote, bad to make mistakes, but it's not true. Source doesn't judge us. God doesn't right. judge us. Right. So why do we need to judge ourselves? Now, initially, as society developed, we needed to have rules of society, certainly. I'm not suggesting that everybody should go out and do whatever they want, but everybody knows, everybody knows who's listening to our show that what they know to be the right thing is probably a 5D decision. Now, what I was told by my guides is that there's actually five possible choices for every decision. Two below grade, which most people aren't gonna choose, two above grade, and one fifth dimensional choice. And that ideal choice will skyrocket you faster than any other choice. So you can be making good choices and still not be 5D. When you're 5D, it's unthinkable to do anything but that choice. And that's how you know. And here's another example. Um, when somebody comes to my house, no matter what, I invite them to sit down and then I ask them what they want to drink. What would you like to drink? And most people do something like that. It's unthinkable for me to let someone sit down and not offer them something. It's same as me. <laughs> okay. So that's a 5D choice because it's unthinkable to do anything else but this generous sharing thing. That's how you know you're 5D. Now, the thing is, awesome. you really don't know you're being 5D until when you slide back into fourth or third. Okay, because so how would, third, when everything's not, not smooth, then you go, whoa. So and what then would, you think about what, your day. Go ahead. Okay, no, I don't mean to cut you off. I just want you, because you just hit something really awesome. And obviously, I know it's in the book, and I know the answer. But for the audience, like, what is the difference between 4 to 3D? Okay, I call 4D a portal. Right. I call it the equivalent of Grand Central Station. Right. Gives right. everybody a really good picture. Or an airport. You never go to the airport to spend the night. It might be an accident. You might get stuck there. But you do not go to the airport to spend the night. You go to the airport to get somewhere else. And that's 4D. 4D is the vibration is faster and the energy is faster, but there's still polarity. So that's why when you're really down and you slide into 4D, you're going to go really down. And when you're really up and you're in 4D, you're going to slide into 5D really fast. And think of that movie, uh, I think it was What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams, right. where he rescued his wife who was kind of in that, she was in that 4D state where she couldn't give herself permission to be happy because she had so much self-judgment. And so he rescued her from that because it was a self-imposed, um, you know, lowering. Now for anybody who's depressed, and let's face it, Lots of people are, are pretty depressed right now. Anyway, when you can get, um, get yourself in front of the sunset, even if you have to watch it on your internet, um, because first of all, I was told by my guides when I had a, a, a very tough thing that I was going through, I, my 25 year marriage ended and I had so much sadness about that. And I asked what I could do, but don't make me do too much. I was kind of mad, you know, you're mad at, like, huh. you're almost at the place where you're, you're so sad and so mad and so sorry for yourself. You wanted to get better, but don't make me do anything to make it better, you know. So I was told two things. I was told to go watch sunsets. And then I was told, ask God to show you how much you are loved. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered is when I make that statement, dear God, show me how much I'm loved. Everything changes. Right. It isn't always it doesn't mean somebody's going to come up to you and say, Hey, you're awesome. You're awesome. Jay, what a great, 
what a great guy you are. What a great show you have. It doesn't always happen, yeah. but the energy around you changes and you start to feel good about yourself. And it, 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 it emerges. And I found out later that there's science behind this idea of watching sunsets because subconsciously the mind and the body know there's going to be another one tomorrow. By the way, my wife literally lives for sunsets. When she hears this, I'm sending her when this is done, you know, before we publish it and get it all done with my company, I'm going to have her look at this because she's such a huge fan of yours. And when she hears that, she's going to be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, you don't know this idea. Like she literally, since the quarantine, will drive, grab our, grab our girls and go down, at, you know, at seven o'clock at night towards the beach and stay in the car just to watch, you know, not to get out because we can't get out. Right. But yeah, that's amazing. I love that. And then God show me how much I am love. That's just, that's profound, beautiful. Um, okay. So I do want to, you know, before a couple more points, um, connecting with your higher self, um, how important that is. I mean, again, you taught me that I, I have a, a funny story, which I've shared on other podcasts, but I really got really good at doing that and asking that question. And uh, you know, is it in my highest and best interest to blank? And so when we were going on, my wife and I live on a life where we travel as much as we can. This has kind of slowed down our life by design, unfortunately, but hopefully we can get back to it. But when we went to Puerto Rico, which was in last September, I'm not kidding you, Maureen. I did it in the car, dropped off my kids to school in the morning and it was a massive storm coming or going there. And so we're like, it, it was the next, we were supposed to leave that night to go there. And I asked, I said, is it in my highest and best it isn't in my highest and best interest to go to Puerto Rico. And I was in my car and I, you know, said a prayer and closed and literally the music came on in the car. I was listening to Sirius radio. It was Fred Astaire. Come fly away. And I was just, <laughs> it was the most amazing thing. I mean, I literally almost like drove my car off the road because I was driving back home, but I know that it works. And so anyway, with, for people that don't know, what I'm talking about in that talk a little bit about connecting to your higher self. Okay. So initially this, this quest of mine came from uh, teaching the Merkaba because in the early, early years, in the early nineties, when we first were learning the Merkaba and sharing it, you know, teaching it, um, we were told not to turn it on, not to activate it until we had permission from our higher self. And I had permission. Um, and one of the guys in the class called me and said, so did you get permission? And I go, oh, yeah. And he said, did you do it? And I hate it when people do that. You know, I'm, I'm already on board here. Why are you asking me if I did it? Because the answer was no, I had not. Right. So, um, uh, of course, his next question was, and why not? And I couldn't tell him because I was afraid to admit that I was afraid. I was afraid I was wrong. I was afraid to admit that maybe uh, I had made it up. So I made it my business to find a way that everyone could connect with their higher self in a very logical, practical, precise way. And in that way, you are able to have a reliable, accurate connection with your divine source. Now, what is your higher self? Your higher self is the version of you that's fully plugged into God. So it's like the transformer on your laptop. Right. It heats up, it's got all that energy in it, and it's going to hold stuff that you can't take right now. So your higher self has got the, the skinny on the, the bigger picture of what's going on in your life. And it also knows what you care about personally. So when you check in with your higher self, it's still an act of free will. It's not like you're letting your higher self rule you. You still have to decide to follow through. Because you could have still said, oh, I'm, I'm going to believe the weather report. I'm not going to go. And that's right. not what you did. So the best part about developing a higher self connection is that you get accuracy that you can rely on. Now, how do you get the accuracy? 45 days of practice about stuff you don't care. Right. So the rules are pretty simple. You only ask um, yes, no questions. Right. You always follow through on your practice period. And you give up all your other devices. No more pendulum, no more muscle testing, no more uh, you know, cards or any of that stuff for six weeks. And why six weeks? Because it takes six weeks to develop new DNA. So when you do this for six weeks, your body makes an adjustment. Now, the big aha for most people is when I start to ask them, well, how do you make decisions? And, and everybody makes decisions based on data right. that's old. Right. So your history, what you find on the internet, what your friends tell you. Let's say you're going to buy a car. You're checking the resources on the internet. Right. You're checking the blue book. You're checking everything you can. You're test driving that car. 
those are all historical data. Right. If you, <clears throat> if you were to uh, choose something with someone and um, you choose the one that your higher self told you and then your buddy or your friend chose the thing that you, your higher self didn't pick, you would see a big difference, whether it's a restaurant or the car you're going to buy or, or something. You would know with absolute certainty that you had made the highest and best choice. Now, what I, what I, um, when I developed this tool, it took me seven years to perfect it. And I taught it to everyone in my class. And I started getting lots of feedback and lots of uh, 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 information from people. If you want to know the big story and the big detail about it, get the book Beyond the Flo Flower of Life, Beyond right. the Flower of Life, chapters right. four and five, cover it from soup to nuts. If you just want the short version, it's in all the other books because I didn't want to, I'm looking for right now a book. I didn't want to take a chance on somebody not getting that information. So the higher self connection is so important because if you have a resource that allows you to know what you need to know before you need to know it, it makes your life smooth. One time I was driving home from work and this was a cycle where I had three of my four sons were still at home. Um, I was working a corporate job. So I, you know, I tried to get out at five, but a lot of times I got stuck. Right. The grocery store was on the way home and I was, I always shopped once a week and I made menus so I could manage, you know, all this stuff. And <clears throat> my higher self said, stop at the grocery store. I don't want to stop at the grocery store. Stop at the grocery store. I don't want to stop at the grocery store. Okay, fine. I'll stop at the grocery store. So I stop at the grocery store. Okay, what am I here for? Tuna fish. I don't need tuna fish. <laughs> Is tuna fish on your menu tonight? Yes. Get tuna fish. Okay, fine. So it's okay to argue with your higher self, but your higher self is going to come back, if, you know, if it's in your highest and best good and say, do it anyway. And this is the benefit because your higher self is going to come in and tell you stuff after your six weeks, which is the big benefit because there's a lot of instances where I have been told to take an action. If I had not taken that action, I wouldn't have gotten some huge benefit down the road. All right. So I get home and I ch I'm making the noodles. I've got everything cooked, cooking along, you know, and I go you to get out. The tuna fish casserole. Uh-huh. <laughs> Right. Famous tuna fish castle, right? For families. Okay. So, so. Why is my I'm so, laughing because my mom used to make that so much and it just flashed back to me, but continue. Yeah. 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 It's a great, great meal. Okay. So I reach in the cupboard to get the tuna fish. There's no tuna fish there. And then, you know, a week or so later when I'm, I'm helping one of my sons clean out their room, you know, what do you know? There's a can of tuna fish underneath the bed. <laughs> now, if you have four sons that are hungry all the time, oh, and a cat, I don't know who ate it. All I know is that my higher self told me to take that action. Now that's a little thing, but there have been big things that um, have happened that have also been remarkable, remarkable, remarkable. And one of those stories, I'll try to make really short. No, it's okay. To take it's okay? Time. Okay, Fabulous. good. Um, one of those stories, which is very special to me, is um, I was in China teaching, and my husband uh, reaches out to me and says, you know, when you get back, I want to go, since, since we're going to go to the, we were living, we had a home in San Diego and here in the city in New York. So I would be coming back to San Diego. And uh, I had a friend who was putting on an event at, at LACMA, the Los Angeles um, uh, Museum. And so um, his concert was at six o'clock. So I figured, you know, we would, we would go maybe around noon and drive to LA and and have the day there and enjoy the museum and see the concert and come back. Okay, so he comes up with this brilliant idea that we should leave early and go to the new Broad Museum, which had just opened. Well, it was the day after I was coming back from China that we were supposed to do this. I thought this was a terrible idea. My, my idea of how I'm gonna spend the day after I get home is to kind of take wow. my time yeah. getting that, you know, back into the groove here. And I said to him, I don't want to do that. And then I said, like I typically do, but I'll check in. And if my higher self says to do it, I will. So we did. <clears throat> my higher self said, do it. So we leave at 6 a.m. Uh, and drive to L.A. We get to the museum and there are 
a hundred people in line to get in. This is an hour before it opens. Wow. There's another 70 people in the line of people who prepaid and um, signed up six months ago when the museum opening was announced. And then there was a third line if you wanted to pay extra to see this extra thing. Right. Okay. So we get in the extra line because we don't have tickets and because we wanted to see the extra thing anyway. And I'm, I'm near the front of the line. And as soon as we get situated, my husband looks at me and says, okay, I'm going for coffee. And he just walks away just like that. And I thought, huh, but you know, I'm pretty chatty. So I chatted with a guy in front of me, you know, and he said, you could be a docent. You know, everybody came along. I helped him figure out what line they were supposed to be in. Then a lady comes from the line of prepaid up to our line and says, I've got a couple of extra tickets that I'd like to um, give to someone. Does anybody here want to get early entry? Nobody said anything. I'm looking, you know, there's 30 people behind me. Nobody says anything. So I thought, oh, okay, I want them. And she said, no, no, I want to give them to two people. And I said, I am two people. I just, one's getting coffee. Okay. So she said, well, you're going to have to come back and stand with my family. And I said, no problem. I start to follow her and my guide comes in and says, you need to talk to these people. Well, I always talk to people, but this seemed like really important. So we chat for a few minutes and then she hands me her ticket. And she said, you need to hang on to this because I'm going to go up front and talk to the whatever I need to ask a question and if we get separated you're going to need this because you know your name's not on there and I said okay and I look at the paper and it has a very long German name on it Regelsberger and <clears throat> I said to the man I used to know a family named Regelsberger but they're from Ohio and he said we're from Ohio no way and without skipping a beat the older woman who was with him his mother looked at me and said, are you Maureen? No way. It gets better. His daughter came to work for me in New York City because I needed an assistant. Wow. Both of his girls were work going to school in New York. They stayed in my apartment when they came to see the girls because wow. I wasn't there all the time. And even better was when his daughter, Jenna, uh, his daughter couldn't come, started sending her friend as a substitute to help out. Finally, I ended up hiring Jenna. She was the best assistant I had ever had. And she stayed with me for a number of years. Wow. I wouldn't have had that. Yeah. If I hadn't said yes. Right. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Unbelievable. That's a pretty amazing story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, people, people have to train themselves. I mean, and you give the instructions on, you know, connecting and like you said, checking in. Right. Yeah. And just to kind of clarify that story, the woman who said, are you Maureen? She was my mother's best friend when I was growing up. And she had not seen me in 30 years. But she just knew that it was you. Yeah. Wow. I haven't changed much. <laughs> <laughs> do you have daughters? Or you just have four sons or do you have daughters too? No daughters. I wish. Wow. So my family. So this is <laughs> it, this, is, this is interesting. So I'm the oldest of nine. There's six boys and three girls. And I don't have any sons. I just have daughters. But my, my uh, Monica has two sons, uh, my bonus children. Um, but that's, that's fascinating. Okay, so one last point. Um, and I, I can't end a podcast without speaking to you about the love and planetary consciousness and just how important all of that really is as we move forward. Um, and, you know, kind of tied into where you see humanity going from here. It's like going to the gym. We often decide to go to the gym because we want to get in shape. Right. But we get so much more out of it. Right. So no matter what you, the listener, our listener, gets into, whether it's meditation, any form of spirituality, anything that elevates you and your consciousness and makes you a better person, is going to help make all of this come together. And to that end, I invite every one of you to say, I'm asking for a day of heaven on earth for me and everyone I come in contact with. It's that simple. It's beautiful, Maureen. Honestly, amazing. Thank you so much for coming on today. If, if someone wants to, well, let's, before I end it, um, so right now, if somebody wants to work with you directly, I mean, obviously I know you do readings and all that stuff, but right now, 
because I'm going to, uh, my, my goal is to publish this within the next couple of weeks. Like what's the best way for them to connect with you or potentially work with you right now? I have a um, monthly post, a blog post yep. that I always put out with a freebie of some sort, a meditation, usually a guided meditation. They're pretty wonderful. A lot of times they're the, the newest ones that I've come out with that, you know, the first month it's free. Um, so that would be one way. At the other end of the spectrum is that I have an annual program called the Ascension Institute. It is a mystery school and it's a year long training with me that they get a lot of direct contact and a lot of interaction and they get, I help fill out whatever is missing in their awareness, consciousness, knowing like that because of the broad base of knowledge that I carry. I probably should ask you this question before a lot of my fans and followers get angry with me and say, you just had such a great podcast, but you didn't ask her the big question. Ascension, what does it actually mean? So many, and before you answer, because so many people think, again, you know, it's a, it's a place, they're coming in ships, and they're going to move us. What, what does Ascension mean to you? I have never seen that as Ascension, just right. so you know. Yeah. Um, my version of Ascension is uh, not the Easter kind, but that each of us is going to become an ascended master or the equivalent of an ascended master. And as we evolve in consciousness and we catch up with our spirituality, we are becoming the ascended masters on the planet earth, enjoying and co-creating with each other. So when somebody asks me, what does it mean? What does 5D mean? Or I would say it's the same as ascension. And then I would also say, well, what is ascension? It is the equivalent of what all of the traditions have taught us is heaven. It's where we think and get to act and interact in a very auspicious, loving way. I mean, can't, can't say it any better. I think there's a lot of confusion in our community about what it is. And then, you know, people will read books uh, and, and possibly get a little bit more confused. But I, I, I am in total agreement with you and have been also um, as I've learned and worked with different people and stood on the shoulders of other people and obviously read different books. But I mean, I, I really do love how you wrap it up as it's just a state of being. I mean, that's really. Well, and, and that's why I told this story about teenagers right. because we're fifth dimensional already. Right. Right. Many of us are fifth dimensional already. We don't always hold it. Right. But you know, we just like the teenager, we're getting a little more 5d every minute, every day, every effort. Yeah. And, and, and it's a choice. Um, like I, I love what you said earlier too about the you have five choices, right? And one of them is fifth dimension, and two of them may be very very uh, high conscious, but they're not fifth dimension. So you, it's just a game that you're you're basically playing with yourself until you can actually choose the fifth dimension. And that's why you ask your higher self because your higher self is going to tell you the five D decision. Right. And connecting with that. It's, you know, the last thing that I'll let you go is you said about, I could never not offer them water. And it's like, I, I've, I've just known that my whole life, even when I wasn't where I'm at is evolved as a soul now where I would just always offer people, you know, workers, anybody that ever came into my existence, the same thing as you. It's like, we have that and, and you affirming that that's a fifth dimension uh, or fifth dimensional aspect or experience. is just, well, it helps us understand 5d because 5D is the place where you do have choice. Sure. But the choice is so clear to you that you don't want to make any other choice. Right. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, guys. Well, listen, um, if you are um, watching this podcast, please, you know, support the amazing people that come on. Uh, Maureen's w website is, it's just maureensaintgermain.com, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. And everything is there. You can buy all of her books there. I mean, obviously I highly recommend that you guys buy waking up in 5d. This is a phenomenal book. I've actually read it twice. I mean, just so you know, I'm not BSing you. Look at all this. You're, <laughs> you're the second person today that said that. <laughs> Look at all those highlights. The whole book is highlighted. Um, but thank you so much. I'm actually writing a book with my wife now, both of us together are, are co-authoring it, co-creating it. Um, that's basically Title raising your vibration and you know, there's a subtitle to it But um, a lot of your teachings will be found in there. Of course, we'll give you ample credit But all I can say is namaste. I can say I have such a profound love for you And I'm so glad that you came on my podcast today. Like I said, it's an honor 
And I cannot wait to push this into the universe because I think it was amazing. Thank you, Jay. It's a pleasure okay. to be with you. Thank you so much, Maureen. I'll talk to you soon.